Welcome back to the channel guys. Today is the day. Today I'm going to be comparing the two best modular lasers on the planet. I'm going to be showing you guys the Laser Pecker 4 and the Xtool F1. I'm going to be going over everything that makes them mechanically alike and different, the pros and cons of the accessories that each of the units have, and I'm going to be testing the lasers head to head to see which one performs better in a variety of different tests. Straight out of the box, these two lasers are vastly different. The LP4 comes with a ton of parts and pieces that you have to piece together in order to get your laser to work. Mostly accessories, but a lot of the actual parts of the laser as well. The F1 is ready to go straight out of the box. The Xtool F1 is a galvanometer system. That means it has four F theta lenses. It has a 10 watt 455 nanomicron diode laser and a two watt 1064 nanomicron infrared laser. While the laser picker is a 10 watt 450 nanomicron laser, it is a two watt 1064 nanomicron pulsed fiber laser. Both lasers are similar in the fact that they have dual laser light focusing. As you lower your laser, you'll know that you're focused when your two dots are coinciding with each other. The same with the Xtool F1, except it's a blue light and a red light. As soon as they touch and are meeting, that is when you know you are focused. The F1 is different from the LP4 in that not only does it have an onboard knob that focuses the laser, you can actually use your app or your software to autofocus by setting the thickness of the material. That is pretty useful. Both of these lasers are built to be mobile. That is the difference between between them and the desktop style diode laser. They each have a removable plate on the bottom of them so that you can set your laser directly on top of whatever it is that you want to engrave. And the LP4 is unique in the sense that you have 180 degree rotation engraving. You can move the laser head 180 degrees and hit any angle that you could possibly want. One of the obvious things for the F1 is its engraving area. The Laser Picker 4's engraving area is 160 millimeters by 120, and the Xtool F1's engraving area is 115 by 115. Having a laser that can engrave a bigger surface area is actually probably the best selling point that you can possibly have. Both of these guys are super mobile, like I said. The LP4 is nine pounds, and the F1 is 10 pounds. Both of them are lighter than my gigantic eight month old child, and can be carried to craft shows super, super easy. Let's talk safety because that's obviously one of the most important things you could possibly have. The F1 has a shroud that lifts up and down so that you don't have to disturb your piece while you're working on it. The LP4 is different because it has a magnetic shroud, which is pretty cool. If I've got my laser focused in the perfect position, say this is what I'm working with here. Now I have run my laser and I've done everything that I need to do. And I wanna come and take this off. It moves my piece out of the way, which is not a problem, right? But say you wanna go ahead and do this again. I've got it centered exactly where I want it to go. I can't get that there. You can try the little gap that's there. You have to again lift this guy up, put this under, lower it, and focus it again. Whereas if I'm over here, bring the shroud down, engrave, lift it up, take it out, put another one in, Bring the shroud down, engrave. Both the LP4 and the Xtool F1 have an emergency off switch, this guy right here. You press it, it's immediately disengaged. As long as the red light is on, you cannot go in and play it again. And this guy right here is your stop switch on the F1. Both are very useful in case of emergency. Both have fire protection and tilt protection, and that way if they fall over or catch a flame, they will automatically shut off, and that is a great safety feature to have. When you're investing in a laser like this, it's important to think about accessories. What is it that they add to the package that sweetens the deal and makes the price tag worth it? Both lasers have a rotary attachment that works very well if you're into making tumblers and rings and stuff like that. Next tools is cool in the sense that I can utilize it for my F1 and my D1 Pro. I do like the design of the laser peckers better. It's just a sleeker, nicer design. Everything about it runs just a little bit smoother and it happens to look like the Corvette of rotary attachments. Both the Xtool F1 and the Laser Pecker 4 have a slide extension. The only difference about the slide extensions is that the LP4 slide extension is 160 millimeters by 300 millimeters, and the F1 slide extension is 400 millimeters by 115 millimeters. And that has to do with the parameters of the laser and the size that it is able to engrave. So you get a longer length in the F1, but a little bit wider width in the LP4. Strictly because of the accessories on this accessory, the X-Tools takes the cake. This guy has a sliding bevel here, 
so that you can adjust exactly where you want your engraving to sit. And all of these little odds and ends are clamps. This one goes right into your slot here and you tighten this down and it will never move. This guy snaps on so you can set it anywhere you want at any given time. These are awesome. If you're getting these lasers, you have to include the air purification in the package deal. Do not buy these lasers if you're not getting the air purification, especially if you plan on being around people or inside confined spaces. It makes it so that you can work right in your living room and have absolutely no issues with smoke. Sadly, I only have Xtools air purification system, so I can't say a word about laser peckers, but it looks like a similar system and I'm sure it runs almost identically. All right, so everything that we've looked at has been pretty close so far. Now it's time to test what these lasers can do and how they compare to each other, and that should help you make your decision on which laser you should choose. In reference to cutting, both of these guys claim they can cut up to eight millimeters of wood. I just ran a quick little test on this piece of three millimeter, and they both cut perfectly and engraved perfectly. This is just a vector from off of a recent t-shirt that I designed. If you're interested, and getting a t-shirt to support the channel. I'll have that link in the description down below and a preview right here. This guy is sick. Now let's see if we can get this exact same result with the LP4. So I use cards like these for table runners and stuff like that for craft shows just to show pricing. I am going to do a speed test on these guys, I'm going to engrave one with the F1 here and one with the LP4. I think this is where you get max speed out of your F1, whereas LP4 will just perform like normally and do exactly what it's supposed to do. All right, so here's the big reveal. This is done by the X tool and this is done by the LP4. Obviously there's a difference in the two. This guy looks like it was done by a laser and this looks like it was inked with white ink. It's pretty good. If you're in the market for invitations or something like this, the F1 does a really, really great job. This is an okay job too. If I was doing price cards for a craft show and I just needed to put like $10 on something and just toss it down, I would use this all day. One thing that I've been doing a lot of lately is these leatherette patches for my hats that I've been making. When I come out to the shop, I mostly use my LP4, but the F1 can keep up with this kind of work as well. This engraving on the F1 took 36 seconds. I will have to modify the parameters just a little bit because I'd like it a little bit darker, but 36 seconds pretty quick. All right, so this is actually what I'm looking for in reference to engravings. This one took 46 seconds, this one took 36. If I had gotten the parameters a little bit darker and the dot duration a little bit darker on the X tool, they might have been almost identical time and engraving. Next, I wanted to see clean lines. I tried out these metal business cards. I've done metal business cards with both of these lasers and I know they both work, but I wanna see which one is faster and crispier. In reference to speed, this one took about a minute and 30 seconds and this one took a minute. They're both pretty comparable. As long as they don't take 10 minutes, I'm fine with a minute to a two minute engraving. This right here, is the X Tools engraving on a metal business card. And this is the Laser Pecker Force. I could not tell you why they come out different colors, but I think I like the Laser Peckers better. I like the dark engraving. It makes everything that I have readable and legible. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a clean business card, and this is something that I would sell, and so is this. They both are beautiful. I just like the dark color better. You tell me which one you like better. I think they both look great. So I did a little bit more experimenting and although I can't tell you why the colors come out the way they do, I think it's a depth thing. I was able to get a darker engraving from the X tool and a lighter engraving from the LP4. So that's kind of nice. After that, we are cutting and engraving acrylic. Acrylic is very commonly used for keychains and little ornamental pieces, and the x -Tool F1 and the Laser Picker 4 are perfect for using that. I'm not super used to cutting on acrylic, so I'm not 100% confident in my parameters. Both engraved really well, but it required a little bit of muscle to get what I cut on the LP4 to separate. That might've been my fault, but either way, after I got it separated, it looks great. Looks pretty good except for all the sticky residue I left on there, but that is a cute little axe. Now compare that to the engraving of the X tool 
This is the laser pecker. They both cut acrylic and they both engrave acrylic, so that is awesome. The last and final test, and probably the most important test that I did, was on wood because that's what I engrave on at all times, but the test I did was for precision. So, that was the laser pecker 4. That looks beautiful. Now let's try with the F1. This is one of those things that you're gonna have to really, really look at to tell the difference. Once you pull the engraving off the LP4, you say, wow, that looks great and fantastic and perfect. And then you run the X-Tool F1, and you say, that looks pretty nice too. Once you put them right next to each other, you can tell that one of them is sharper and more precise than the other. This is the X-Tool version, and this is the Laser Picker 4 version. If you look at the fine, fine details, that's where you'll be able to tell the difference. These are a little, a little bit thicker and a little less crispy than the X-Tool. This is a perfect coaster. I would sell this today, slap a cork bottom on it, sand it real nice, put some clear coat on it, and sell that. It's beautiful. But if you're going for the most possible detail possible, you can just look at the two right there and see a bit of difference. Now, which laser would I choose? I think that the question is subjective. They both have their pros and their cons. They both work exceptionally well. And I want both of them in my shop. Neither of them is rendered useless by the other. The LP4, I will come out and do quick engravings. Literally turn it on, do an engraving, and run out and be out of the shop in four minutes. And the F1, I can sit and I can do things that are batched, that are particular, and custom over and over and over again. If I happen to be working with my X-Tool D1 Pros, and I'm in the same software, I can also run my F1 and have an ecosystem of lasers working all at the same time. These guys are the top of their game for a reason. They are both exceptionally great lasers. And if you're a tech geared person who knows exactly what's going on with dot duration and dots per inch and all kinds of stuff like that, then the F1 is for you. But if you're somebody who just wants to engrave very quickly, get it done, and not have a bunch of bells and whistles and worry. Who wants to get a really, really nice engraving without having the hassle of learning software or anything like that? The LP4 is for you. All right, so let's hear it in the comments section down below. I wanna know which laser you guys are choosing. I'm very interested after watching my video what you think about the LP4 and the F1. I have links for all of these products in the description below. Some of these links are affiliate links, so if you do click on those links and purchase something, I will get a cut from that. I really appreciate that. But truly, I am interested. What do you think about these lasers? Let me know, and I will see you in the next one.